Hello and welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to be working on number of atoms. And in this one, um, you're given a string formula representing a chemical formula, and you want to return the count of each atom. The atomic element always starts with an uppercase letter, then zero or more lowercase letters represents the name. Now, one or more digits represents the count. If there is a count of one, then you won't have any digits. And if there's a count of more than one, you will have digits. So if you're familiar with chemistry, that's how it works. So if you have like OH or something, you don't have any digits because it's just assumed there's one of each. And if there's more, then, then it will tell you. Um, so you can have like all kinds of different formulas and you can also have formulas where things are in parentheses followed by a number. And you, you can also have things that don't have a number. So I think some of these examples, like technically they might have examples like this, which I think would be valid with no count. So if there's no count after, then I think you assume zero. And I think there won't always be a count because I remember there were some there were some examples that had that. So just because there's like a formula or a parenthesis doesn't mean there's a number afterwards. So yeah. Um, and then yeah, so let's go through these examples. So for H2O, you have two H's and one O. For MG, O, H2. So this whole thing, there's two of each of these. So there's two H's, two O's, and an MG. And then for this guy, so there's SO32, which means there's three S's and six O's, right? That's going to be this inner one. Then you have ON, and then there's two of all of that. So it's like two, two, then this gets multiplied by two, so six, and then this becomes 12. And then there's a K4 uh, before, so K4, N2, O14. Um, because there's two twos and 12 twos here, and then yeah, and S4. Uh, oh, right, because yes, this is not S6, this, is, this was SO3, so it becomes S2, SO6, and then S4, SO12. Okay, or S4, O12. So basically that gets converted, these two get moved over here. So how do you do this problem? And the constraints are um, 1,000. So there's really no way to get around the case of n squared, I think, because let's say you have like some long thing. Let's just say I have a bunch of stuff and it'll be like, um, yeah, I mean, I guess maybe you can get around it a little bit, but, but, but not really, right? Like imagine you have a case like, so let's say you have like some, some long sequence of um, atoms and then you had like two and then in another parentheses, you know, four, and another parentheses, six, and so on and so on. So you could technically be like, if there's a bunch of parentheses that follow each other, let me just get all those counts and then multiply the inner thing by it. And that would be faster. But you can also have, you know, like some big thing with like a three, and now you have some other things. And then you have some other thing with like a four and some other stuff and so on. So basically, I don't think there's a way to get it from being n squared. Maybe, yeah, as far as I know. Um, so how would you do this? So because we only want the count of each item, like normally, um, when you do these open and close parentheses and you want counts of items, if you're building a string, you would just, you would just like have an array of, um, you would have an array of characters, but because we want counts of items, like we don't really need to store something like this, right? We don't really need to store something like this. We, we just want to store counts of items. And then once we get the count of those items, like ideally, if we can get the count of every item in this, then we can just sort it by the element and then return all that combined. So this is what we want ideally, this like count dictionary. So you can basically just use a stack here, just like um, in other problems. And basically what you would do is every time you have an open parenthesis in your stack, like as your new stack thing, instead of having characters, you just have dictionaries. So anytime you have an open parenthesis, you just create a new dictionary, you put stuff in there. And then when you have a closed parenthesis, you get the count after that parenthesis. And then for every key in your dictionary, you multiply it by that count. So let me show you what I mean. I got this from the editorial. This is a pretty big uh, example. So basically what we're gonna end up doing is there's like three things that you can run into, right? So there's gonna be one open paren which just means add a new dictionary to the stack. So let's move this over here. Maybe make it bigger. Add new dictionary or map, call it map, I guess Java to the stack. Okay. And you have two, close paren. 
then all we have to do here is get the number after if there is one and um, and multiply every element by that number right and let's say and so it will just call it map every element in the map times that number so that would be that one let's move it over here I guess we don't really need these anymore okay so basically like let's say there's a close paren here we'll just take the number after and then we'll take our current dictionary um, multiply every element by that number then pop it and update dictionary before it on the stack. And I'll show you what I mean by all that. Um, and then the third thing is we just run into like a normal, a normal, um, a normal like uh, element, right? So normal element, get element, and I'll show you, I'll explain how to do that then get its count and update current dictionary or map. So something like this. So these are the three things we're gonna be doing. And initially you wanna create a dictionary cause like even without parens, like let's say you have something like H202, you still wanna have a dictionary of counts. So you wanna have a dictionary of counts right when you start, but then every time you have a new open paren, you're gonna make a new one and you're gonna push that onto the stack. So let's actually have that stack um, and then we can have these and I found a nice thing from yesterday. So we can use this as our stack. This is pretty good. Yeah, so this will be our stack. So initially what we do is we make a new map and we're gonna go through this thing and then I just have this just to double check that our answer is correct. So first thing, we run into a letter, which means this is an element, right? It's not a parenthesis, it's not a closed parenthesis, it's an element. So an element, um, they, they said in the description, every element will be one uppercase letter followed by some lowercase letters. So like NA or something. I think it's only one and one actually. I think in my code, I had it loop forever, but I think technically, uh, as far as I remember from chemistry, there's only an element that's like either one uppercase letter or an uppercase and a lowercase letter. So that's all you have to check for. So you can just say like, okay, here's the first letter. Is the second thing lowercase? If it is, then, then this whole thing's element. So here are elements NA. So we get this element then we check if there's a number after it there is so now we update our current dictionary so we're going to say n a with a count of two i actually did this like move left thing and i don't like it so let me change it okay and then we're going to go to our next element it's not a parenthesis so we get the next element which is z n and there is no count so we're going to say if there is no count we'll just default the count to one so z n count of one then we go to our next element, which is RB with a count of five. Yeah. And so we update that. And then um, let's actually try to make this ideally bigger. Whoops. Okay, we can leave that for now. Let's just try to make our stack bigger so we can fit everything. There we go. Okay, maybe I can even write it. Actually, it might be better to just write it like this, to be honest, because then, and then I could have like something like this. Okay, so this is our stuff. Now we hit a parenthesis, which means we're gonna take some stuff in here, do some operation, and then update the one outside. So every time we hit a parenthesis, we're gonna add a new dictionary to the stack. So we add a new dictionary. Then we hit, and let's just get rid of this. Then we hit this PU. So we're gonna add PU to the stack. There is no count, so we'll just default to one. Then we hit an S, so S with a count of 11. Then we hit another open parenthesis. So same thing, we add another dictionary to the stack. Then we have this SH, so S, so we'll do S with a count of one first, then you'll have H with a count of one. Now we hit a close parenthesis, which means for our current dictionary, we need to get the number after this close parenthesis. There might be one, there might not be. I don't think there has to be one. Yeah, like in this case, there is no number. So we check, is there a number behind this? Yes, there is. And if there is a number, then we take this whole dictionary and multiply everything in here by this number. So this gets updated to six, this gets updated to six. Now, after we're done with that, we're gonna take this dictionary. We're 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 no long we're we're all we're we're done with this whole inner thing. 
So now we need to take this dictionary and update these elements with these. So we need to take everything here and add them all to here. So now we have 17 S's and six H's. So this is popped. Then we go to our next element, which is W with no count. So we just give it a count of one. Then close paren, which means we check for a number. There is a number, two. So we take every element in here and multiply by two. So two, 34, 12. Maybe I'm in um, screw up some math somewhere, but hopefully not. And then we're gonna pop this guy and update everything in here with those. So there are no PUs in here. So PU2, S34, um, H12, do we have any? No, 12, W2, we don't have any of those either. Hopefully that's it. I think, yeah, we'll see. Um, then we have an open print. So what we need to do is we need to, and you, and you can see this makes sense, right? Because after the, these close and open parens, now we're like on the outside dictionary, which is correct. Like we're on, the, like if there were no more parens, we would just be updating our outermost dictionary. But now that we have an open paren, we have another dictionary here. So we have H2S, so we'll just quickly write that in. So I'm not gonna go like one element at a time just to speed it up. Then we have a close paren, which means we pop and we look for any more numbers, there aren't any. So we update this dictionary with these numbers. So we add two more here, and then you add one sulfur. Uh, I think I didn't add it. Yeah, 35. Okay, uh, then you have this UN. So this is in the original dictionary now. So we'll just put it down here. I don't think there's any of those. Um, one, actually, oh, here we go, the UNU. So this is actually one element, I believe. Yeah, so I guess it's like uranium or something. So there are some elements that are multiple lowercase letters. So basically when you hit an uppercase letters, you just keep taking any more lowercase letters you have and that's your full thing. So this is UNU with a um, count of one. That's why I would also recommend that like, uh, or what I'm probably gonna start doing is like the examples in the original problem are usually kind of small. The examples in the editorial are like really big just to show that the thing works. So I'm probably gonna start using those and like these Excadra things cause they're a lot better. Um, yeah, so we have eight of those actually. So this is eight. And then we have one PU. Oh, and we already have a PU in here. So three. So let's double check see if we did this correct. So we have 14 H's, we have two NA's, we have three PU's, RB5, um, S35, UNU8, W2, and ZN. Yeah, so this is all correct. Basically, you're gonna have this, you're gonna have this dictionary at the end once all your prints out, then all you do is you just sort by the key, and then you just have key and a number, and then that's it. And also you check if your number is one, then you don't include it, right? So like the Z and one, you don't include because one's default. So those are the steps. You're gonna go through, you're gonna have a stack of dictionaries. You're gonna first have one dictionary, the, the outermost. Every time you have an open paren, you're gonna add another dictionary. Every time you have a closed paren, you're gonna get the number after it. Take everything in your current dictionary, multiply it by that number, and then take all those items and update the dictionary beforehand with those. So add add the add add, add all those. Um, otherwise, you just take your normal element and then you get the count and you update the map. And so that's basically going to be it. So let's take a look at the code. This is another one where I didn't. Um, I'm not going to write the code like live because it's super long. And I originally wrote this in Python, was kind of a mess, and then I cleaned it up, and then I converted to Java and then I, so another good use case of GBT is if your code's kind of a mess, you can just say like clean up whatever and then add in comments. So it add in comments to make it easier to explain. So basically we have our stack. We put it, we push a new map into our stack and then we have the index of the current character we're on. And then we have the three cases, right? So if we have an open paren, all we do is just push a new dictionary on. If we have a closed paren, we have to check, is there a digit after this thing? And if there is a digit after this thing, there can be multiple digits, right? So you can have like, you know, some this, and then you can have as many digits as you want. So you just keep taking characters until they're a digit. And then you convert that. So basically you just keep checking. If it's a digit, let's let's keep getting more characters. And then 
if you did get characters, then take that value, right? Convert it to an int. Or if there were no characters, default to one. Then we're gonna pop from the stack and we're gonna take every single item um, that in that dictionary we pop from the stack and multiply by the value we got at the end of the parens. Um, and then the last case is just a normal, just a normal uh, element. So we just check, do we have lowercase letters? While we have lowercase letters, let's keep adding those lowercase letters. Then we get our element. And then we also check, is there a count after that element? So if the same kind of thing, if there's a count after that element, let's take that count, right? So if you have like, you know, OH2, we'll take this count. Um, otherwise, just default to one. And yeah. And yeah, it looks like, so from what I've seen with the um, the GPT stuff is for stack, I guess the two best things to use is either array list or array deck because array list, you can do like remove last and things like that. And one of the array deck, you can do like peak and top and, you know, typical stack stuff. So yeah, I guess those are the best. And I think like I mentioned before, no one actually uses like the stack, like there is a Java stack, but I haven't seen people use that at all. I think it's like less performant or something too. Okay. Anyway. So yeah. So then you you get your element, you keep getting lowercase letters, you get the number if there's a number, and then you you update your hash map. And then finally, at the very end, we're just gonna build our string. So we're gonna pop, there should only be one dictionary left on the hash, there should only be one dictionary left on the stack after all the parens are done. We're gonna get all the elements, and then we're gonna sort the elements by uh, like just a sorting a string of arrays. And then we're gonna get the count of each of those elements in the hash map. If the count is more than one, we're gonna say element and then count. If the count is one, we're not gonna add the count. And then we just return that whole thing with a string. So I will say also, so there are these like, and this is, this is depending on your language. There's like, is digit or is alphanumeric or is uppercase. I can show you my Python stuff really quick as well. Um, so th there is like built in stuff like is lower, is digit, is that whatever. If you want to build these from scratch, it's pretty easy. So I could just show you some of these. So let's say you want to check if is your is character is digit. All you would do is you would just take the ASCII value. You can just look at an ASCII table and then you could see like, okay, so digits are, um, let's see, where's the actual decimal? Digits are 48 to 57 in the ASCII table. So you can just say like, give me your character, convert to digit. Is it in this range? That means digit. If I want to check if it's an uppercase character, it has to be in this range. If it's a lowercase character, it has to be in this range. If it's an alpha character, it has to be in this range or in this range. If it's alphanumeric, it has to be in like one of these three and so on. So you could build all these things on your own if you want to. It's pretty straightforward. I think I did that in some other videos. Um, but yeah, so this is basically it for this. So you essentially at every new paren, you make a dictionary. And then every time you close a paren, you take the number after, update the dictionary, and then move that dictionary out. And then you're gonna have one dictionary at the end. So mostly this, this just comes down to like, it's just kind of like a lot of code where there are some leak code problems like that that are just like kind of long the code and it's pretty efficient. And so, like I said, this is, uh, I think this is one that the AI thingy is wrong. I think this is N squared because like I said, um, if you have a case where you have a bunch of parens or, or even something as simple as, you know, like, I think this is like 2000 or something. Let's see. Uh, yeah. So this is, uh, mm, yeah, a thousand characters. So let's say we just have like 300 characters and then we have like a bunch of open and closed parens like this. So open paren, close paren, open paren, close paren. And then you have some numbers after here, like, five, 10, whatever, like this would be n squared. So yeah, I think when I ran it, I think I tested this and this said it was n, but I think this is incorrect. Oh, it actually, oh, I think with the comments, it's too long. Yeah, so if I actually run the Python one, I think it'll say it's short enough, It and it'll say n, yeah, which is incorrect. Okay, oh uh, yeah, so this will be n squared. Um, as far as the space, so space, you can't have more than n because even if elements repeat, like let's say your whole let's let's say let's say your whole thing is like some random like 
O2, 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 or parens or whatever. You can't have more characters than, than the length of the string, obviously, and you're not including everything. So it's gonna, in, in reality, be length, shorter than the string, but it's gonna be like O of N, worst case. I guess technically, yeah, let's say you had all different elements, that would be O of N. But you can't have more than that, right? Because you can't have more than the length of the string. Um, yeah. Because a hash map will only reduce the size if, if it'll just turn duplicates into one key. Um, and yeah, so I think it's going to be all for this one. Not super bad, just, just kind of a pain to code. And yeah, I probably won't be doing the weekly contest this week, I think. I might like post the code. Maybe I might do it like during the week or something, but I'm definitely not going to do it like today or tomorrow. Too much stuff to do. Uh... And yeah, and, and I do plan on, like I said, doing some actual software videos in the future. I'll still do like the, the daily problems and stuff, but yeah. And yeah, it's going to be all for this one. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.